We're good to start. Hi. Hello. Thank you for coming. No, not the rest, just the two in the back. I appreciate it. Hello, everybody. This is uh, Sonic the Hedgehog and Unfortunate History, uh, where we will go over the history of Sonic the Hedgehog, Sega as a company, and your wasted childhoods. Uh, we're the, huh? Yeah, right? Uh, we're the foundation for the preservation of Gen 1 Pokemon. I am Max. I'm Andrew. You can follow us on Twitter at 5th Gen, not PKMN. I'm serious about that. Please follow us on Twitter. We're not going to start the panel until at least one of you does that. I'm already following. Did you just follow us? No, I'm already following. Oh, that doesn't count. No, Someone needs to just follow us. I unfollow and refollow. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I think the rest of us are doing it. Too. That's fair. That counts. It worked once. I'm just saying, I did that at like SAC Anime and I got 20 followers out of it. This account is not following me on Twitter. Why would I do that? <laughs> We follow really important people, like fucking... Jackie Chan Adventures? Uh, Modern Doug, Smash Mouth, Joker's Trick. Count Von Count, CFW, my dad. We need some Count Chocula in there too. And uh, Bright Bark News, not to be confused with Bright Bark. <laughs> Bright Bark is dog news for the neighborhood. <laughs> Sounds kind of rough. Ugh, why am I fucking doing this? Okay, so, I'm Max, Andrew, and we are clearly not doing the whole gotta panel fast part of this thing. It's yeah. fucked up last time and it was on presenter mode on the screen too. Okay, so, before we go into the actual content of the panel, I'm gonna quiz you on some deep Sonic lore. I'm gonna show you characters and you're gonna tell me if they're Sonic characters or not. So, if this person's from Sonic, raise your hand. If they're not, keep your hands down. Elon Musk, a Sonic character. Elon Musk is, of course, um, Robotnik, just yeah. before we gave him the fucking cheeseburgers. So Tyler was almost right, but then didn't raise his hand. Is, um, wait, no, not that. Is Toru from Jackie Chan Adventures a Sonic the Hedgehog character? Yeah, he's uh, Big the Cat. No, he's Apple. <laughs> Different panel. Also and true, though. Big the Cat is in turn based off of my OC, Do Not Steal, Bigger the Cat. <laughs> Gone full circle here. Okay, you're all really bad at this. You clearly don't have shit about Sonic. Is uh, the Sailor Moon AMV for crawling in my skin a Sonic the Hedgehog character? <laughs> Fucking duh, it's Shadow. Get your shit out. Uh, is pg and a Sonic the Hedgehog character? Yeah, which one? No, Blaze the Cat. <laughs> Fucking Blaze the Cat. Uh, next is that moment you realized you were sexually attracted to animated cri anthropomorphic animals a character. Yeah, it's Bruce the Bat. <laughs> Man, you guys are really bad at this. Yeah, no, either you're all very asleep. I mean, at some point you should have realized all of them were going to be right. <laughs> <laughs> it's just logical. So. I have to teach you a lot about Sega. We're gonna have to go before Sonic for this, Whoa. which is good because even if you got them all right, we'd still go before Sonic because that's all I prepped for. So, Sega began as a company called Service Games, and they they sold games to servicemen and women. They opened up basically gambling casinos in uh, Japanese ports for Americans in Japan. Which was a great market until, for some fucking reason, Japan, uh, America went, hey, maybe we don't want our sailors gambling their money away. We're already having them gamble their lives away. But, you know, in a capitalist society, money is worth more than your life, so we shouldn't let them lose that. Unless, I don't know, a fucking landlord steals it or some shit. So, Sega had to pivot, and the only thing they knew how to do was appeal to sailors. So they released the game Periscope, which is a very bulky, very large arcade game. It cost 25 cents to play, which was revolutionary for the time. It made a lot of companies realize, oh fuck, we could charge 25 cents for arcade cabinets too. And then they did, because Sega, for some fucking reason, is the company that invented 25 cents standard cabinet play for arcade games. Uh, Periscope, though, was massive, bulky, you just looked into a Periscope and shot things, it's great. So, like any self-respecting video game publisher in the late 70s to early 80s, Sega, Sega had an idea for a revolution. 
but instead of communism because Nintendo's red and red's been taken. And as we all established, red and blue are the only colors that can fight. So Sega would have to go blue. So instead of going all communist and shit, Sega decided to make a video game console, which is, again, what every fucking video game publisher in the early 80s did. And we got the Sega SG-1000. And it was fucking flop. But Sega was not deterred. Like, why would you ever stop making something just because it's not profitable and not selling? This is Sega we're talking about. They never <laughs> learned their fucking lesson. So they, uh, they released another console. And no, it was not different in hardware or aspects. It just looked fucking different. So we first got the Sega SG-1000. Then we got the Sega SG-1002. And then taking a page out of uh, Microsoft and not realizing how fucking numbers work, the next one was the Sega SG-1000 Mark III. Uh, none of these did particularly well until the Master System released in America. I guess like uh, fucking Duggars or something found it and bought one for each of their kids. Because uh, Sega went, oh fuck, someone's buying this, let's just sell it everywhere. So the Master System is what became standard around the world. And uh, again, Sega being fucking Sega had to release 8 million different versions of it, including the Master System Girl. Which, right? <laughs> I didn't Photoshop, I don't, I'm not good enough at Photoshop to do this. I only use MS Paint. I thought that was a pencil case. <laughs> right, no, that is the Sega Master System Girl. It fucking says girl on it, in case you're confused by the fact that it's pink and it's the 80s. So, how well did the Master System sell, though, as a console? Um, Blue is where Sega outsold Nintendo. Red is where Nintendo outsold Sega. Uh, Nintendo outsold Sega. Oh, uh, the NES sold about 60 million units. The Master System was just north of 20 million. So no, no one bought a fucking Master System, that's the point here. But the Master System had a much higher attachment rate for games. The average NES owner only owned eight NES games. Well, the average Master System owner owned 21, which is like the highest attachment rate for a console and probably has to do with the fact that they're all goddamn terrible. So you had to buy a lot more to fill the time. The NES had classic games like Mario Brothers, Duck Hunt, and Mylan's Secret Castle. Uh, I don't, the Master System had like Aztec Adventure and Gun. Huh? Alex Kidd. No. No, no, yeah. Boxing. Huh? Boxing. Boxing. Yeah, but they had they had Mike Tyson's punch out for the yeah. NES. Why would yeah. you fucking yeah. buy boxing? <laughs> you can you can competitively play Mike Tyson's punch out blindfolded. Why would you play any other <laughs> boxing game? But the best place that the Sega Master System sold was Brazil, where it sold eight million units. It is still selling units. You can go to Brazil, you can go to the GameStop. You're like, do I want an Xbox One, PS4, and Nintendo Switch, or a Sega Master System? And for some fucking reason, people go, I want the Master System. Give me the shitty Sonic the Hedgehog port. I'm going to town tonight. Uh, and I, I have a theory for why the Master System sold so well in Japan. Uh, sorry, in Brazil. And that is because Sega, and I'm not even fucking kidding here, hired Tonka to do the marketing. Yes. <laughs> and Tonka and Brazil have one thing in common. They hate rainforests. <laughs> so I'm not saying that electing Javier Bolsonaro is the logical conclusion for having the Sega Master System launch in uh, Brazil, but it is the logical fucking conclusion. So with Sega getting their ass kicked by Nintendo, they realized they needed to change something up. Well, Nintendo had this wonderful poster boy of Mario, uh, not that one. Oh, that one. Uh, yeah, that one. <laughs> yeah, so they had this wonderful poster boy that was helping sell their console and really get it into homes. So Sega, being the, the imaginative sort, decided they needed to copy them. And because their current one, Alex Kidd, just wasn't cutting it. I mean, look at him. I don't think he could cut a slice of bread, let alone the video game industry. But because they needed to not just be blatant copiers and they needed to change their homework just slightly enough so the teacher didn't recognize it, they just tried to change everything for Mario. Mario slopes, and our character's gonna be fast. 
uses, Mario uses two buttons? Ah, oh, we only need one button, because we know nobody uses more than one button. Mario was red. Sonic was blue and had a crippling cookie addiction. To be fair, cookies are the best. He's wearing the blue shirt. I also have Cookie Monster pajamas. Mario is nice and wholesome. Sonic is just an edgelord. <laughs> Mario makes a living of beating up animals. Sonic hurts animals in a much more roundabout way. Mario had a bad movie. Sonic has a movie that's going to be so bad, it's going to make the Mario movie good. <laughs> Mario's classic. Sonic was dated the moment he came out. In fact, this entire design, the original design was they just took Mickey Mouse and slapped on Felix the Cat's head. That was their original design concept for Sonic. But, and they named him Mr. Needle Mouse, and then had wonderful ideas of, oh, we should give him a human girlfriend, that'll, that'll be great. But thanks to the power of YouTube, and totally nothing else, I found the, the real origin story of, of how Sonic came to be. Because they started shopping, the, the Sega of Japan started shopping this round, and the American branch came back and was like, nah, Americans will never go for any of this. We need to Americanize it for our audiences. So what were their suggestions? Uh, he was a real hedgehog living in Nebraska. Uh, he would join the local track team, help out older ladies knitting with quilts with his spines. And his father would fall into a vat of radiation, radi radioactive waste, and die. Much like the franchise. Yeah. Right, we're not there yet. I can't Sorry. Believe, I can't believe Sega of Japan just didn't take all of this and just run with it. Because I think we all know America knows how to do Sonic, right? <laughs> Did you make that shit up? Only some of it. Sounds like Fanon. We all know that Sonic the Hedgehog was created by the true visionary of our time, our lord and savior. Christian Weston Chandler. <laughs> this is like the one groan. This is legit. You don't don't mock our God. Uh, so Christian Weston Chandler is the inventor of not only Sonic the Hedgehog but Pikachu. Sonic being a force that is a combination of the both. Not that he combined the two of them to create one, but that Nintendo and Sega fought viciously over the rights, and that's how it sorted itself out. Now, I've never actually read the Sonichu comics, and that is because, much like the Ark of the Covenant, if you stare at them, your face will melt off because they're so goddamn beautiful. But I've heard stories from others who have survived their interaction, but, you know, they just live at home and take Xanax all day because nothing can help them cope with what they've seen. And what I've gleaned is the comics are actually not at all good. Um, the character, again, amazing. Like, legally, Christian Weston Chandler should be set for life, and he is still receiving royalties checks, for some reason, from the government. Um, but the comic involves uh, Christian on their adventure to get a uh, boyfriend-free girl. Generally, it follows their adventures at the mall, where they will hold a sign that says, 21 and single white male seeking boyfriend-free girl to build from the ground up into a total sweetheart. Uh, any men who see this mind your own goddamn business. And then the cops show up and they pick on him. So Sonichu shows up and viciously murders everybody, just as all things should. And that's, it, believe me, it's much better than it sounds because, again, this is high art. But that, that is the true origin of Sonic the Hedgehog. I can't contest that. Thank you. But all of this together, what, together, what did we get? We got a video game. And unfortunately, this version of the game was just a backboard of the Sonic Gems collection for the GameCube. So, I mean, it's just been backported like five or six times. I mean, after the third time, it stops being culturally relevant. But, uh, but they did solve a lot of the technical issues when they were backporting it, like poor frame rates, the uh, screen flickering. It's just they managed to make something that actually moved fast. But they did try some very interesting ideas. For example, uh, going slow puts you on lower paths, which are longer and harder and more likely to make you die. So it makes you want to go fast. Uh, hence the hence the jokes, uh, but in the same vein, they also pioneered uh, learning through repetition rather than observation. So you really didn't know what was going to come next. So you were going to barrel into those spikes or that death pit at least once or twice before you learned how to jump. Um, so it was just kind of an interesting concept that nobody had really tried before. 
Uh, but it really also, it didn't really pioneer a lot of anything else, because they had the same basic no-nonsense story of bad guy takes over, uh, he puts cute animals into giant robots, steals all the magic stones, and just kind of takes over the world. It's just everyone's done that. Okay, so we've talked about Sonic. So now we have to backtrack a little bit. We're going back to the past. Sonic Genesis. Sega Genesis. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm on, like, no sleep. Don't blame me. Uh, so the Sega Genesis was Sega's next console after the Master System that was actually different this time, we swear. Uh, this was made to directly compete with the NES, and that's like, you know the scene in Indiana Jones where the guy's, like, playing with the sword and fucking Indiana Jones just fucking shoots him? That's what taking the Genesis to a NES fight is like, <laughs> except the Genesis still loses somehow, because... Sure, you could buy a Genesis, but what the fuck did that come with? Altered Beast? Who the fuck gives a shit about Altered Beast? The NES had Mario Bros. 3. That shit was awesome. And also cost half as much as a Genesis. But there were, there were a couple things that got the Genesis off the ground. First was its realistic depiction of blood. Um, that is exactly how much I bleed when someone punches me in the face. Um, so what happened was when uh, Mortal Kombat came out. Everybody got pissy because there was blood in the game. Oh no, how dare they realistically depict bodily fluids coming out of somebody. I didn't know that, like, what the fuck is he doing in the Nintendo cut? Is he using pocket sand from fucking King of the Hill? Sha sha sha! Yes, he's sweating. Um, so the Nintendo version of Mortal Kombat, everything was just sand and sweat and whatever the fuck else you want that to be. Uh, maybe it's maybe he's throwing semen at him. <laughs> it seems appropriate. And the Sega Genesis version was just straight blood, because why not? So what happened was uh, Joe Lieberman had a big stick up his ass about the whole thing and uh, created the ESRB and made like this whole show in the United States Senate. And the idea behind it was to showcase how dangerous and violent video games were. That. And all it did was make people go, oh fuck, I want the Genesis, there's blood in that shit. So, uh, good job, Joe Lieberman, you're a goddamn idiot, and you're the reason we don't have a public option in single-payer healthcare. Fuck you, Joe Lieberman! Uh, number two, of course, we have Tom Polinsky. Heroes of the Fall. So, he was put in charge of Sega of America to sell the Genesis. And this guy knows his shit. He sold Barbie dolls. Do you know how hard it is to sell Barbie dolls before Barbie dolls were popular enough to sell like Barbie dolls? It's difficult. They had boobs on them that confused people. They weren't used to the idea of dolls with boobs. Like when it was brought to a toy show the first time, the people like took the doll and like, is there a vagina? There wasn't, but that's like what they thought a Barbie doll had. So this guy can sell goddamn Barbie dolls. Knows his shit. So he comes up, goes to Sega of Japan, and he's like, okay. You want the Genesis to do well, right? And Sega so Chance. Like, mm. It's like, okay, so you're packing it with Altered Beast. No one wants Altered Beast. So you're just like, that's the fucking point. And he's like, okay, here's what you do. Package it with Sonic the Hedgehog and sell it for $150. Sure, you'll lose money on every sale, and you're selling the most popular game for your console packaged with the console. But really, all you want to do is goddamn sell consoles because then people will buy games. And even though Sega of Japan did not trust him and did not believe it would work, they did it anyway. And they were right, because the Genesis fucking wrecked that shit. Um, the Genesis, while it didn't actually outsell the, any, uh, the Super Nintendo, did a good job fucking trying. And outsold it everywhere except Germany and Japan where the sales uh, were so disproportionate that it made up for the lack of sales literally everywhere else for Nintendo. Because Japan, Nintendo sold 18 million SNESs to Japan's three for uh, the Genesis. I'm confused. Okay, let's try this again. Hey, this is uh, Sonic the Hedgehog and Unfortunate History. Um, the Genesis also still outsold the SNES on games with an attachment rate of 16 to 8, because again, uh, Genesis does what Nintendo don't. You know, things like good games. But, you know, they're doing well, 
So Sega really has to milk the system. So just like the Soviet Union instigated five-year plans to uh, starve their population, Sega had to institute, introduce five-year plans to starve their fan base out of their money. So the first five-year plan we have to keep the Genesis relevant going into the future is the 32X. Uh, the 32X, the idea behind this was um, there was a meeting, and Sega of Japan's like, okay, uh, Sega of America, we want you to release a 32-bit console in America. I know, I know, the Sega Saturn's coming out in like two days. But hear me out, 32-bit console. And Sega's like, this is so fucking dumb. If you want to create a console that just shows slightly more colors than the Genesis, do an add-on. And Sega of Japan thought they were serious and wanted an add-on. So they designed the 32X. It released six months before the Sega Saturn in America. But a couple days after the Sega Saturn already released in Japan. So people get the 32X and they're like, this isn't Dragoon. What's going on? It then released in Japan after the Sega Saturn released in Japan. So it was doomed for fucking failure, but that didn't stop it from meeting its initial sales goals and selling like a quarter of a million units on launch at $200 a pop. That didn't last. By the time the Saturn came out, it was worth $50 and no self-respecting person owned one. But that's the 32X. It also looks fucking weird. It's just like you're putting a mushroom on your console. So here's an image of America applying one to Japan. Oh, too soon? Well, and the other way Sega was trying to milk money out of uh, their, their fans, they ended up making additional things like TV shows, like Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, this was a little in fact, this was the CIA, CIA's first attempt to utilize LSD on people, and they realized they had to turn the dosage way down. Because, I mean, honestly, look at this. You had to be high on something crazy that's, strong to make any of this. That's cultural appropriate. Also, they decided Jaleel White needed a voice on it, because I think Steve Urkel and I think Sonic. It's like, uh, just, just, no. I mean, the, the one positive thing was they had the, uh, the PSA style at the end of every episode where they told kids some valuable life lessons. Uh, like, don't put your head into a blender. Make sure you look at least one way before crossing the freeway. Uh, if the dog's mouth is foaming, make sure your little brother pets it first. That's what they're for. Or consult with your herbologist before going to the forest to pick mushrooms. And apparently, how to spell says. <laughs> we learned so much. Uh, the next five-year plan was the Sega CD. The Sega CD was an add-on to the Genesis. Or uh, maybe the Genesis was an add-on to the Sega CD, I'm not sure. Uh, but... There was a hot moment in the fourth generation of video game consoles where everybody's like, what if, what if video games but movie cutscenes? Not animated cutscenes, just like actual movie cutscenes. And the Sega CD was here for that. It cost $300, which is more than the Genesis. And it could play movie games, like Night Trap, and music. And I think that was it. Yeah, that, that was literally it. Just Night Trap and CDs. And here's a picture. Uh, yeah, I know it looks weird. You want to know where you put the Genesis on it, right? This is what it looks like with Sega Genesis. <laughs> and Sega's next attempt at making a TV show with Sonic Underground. Uh, I don't even know what drugs they were on for this one. I mean, it's just, they've got something special there. Uh, so, basic plot, like... The Sonic has two siblings, and they use the power of music to save the world with hard rock. I, I can't even make this stuff up. It's like, who comes up with this idea? I mean, the one positive takeaway here was uh, they, they inspired Led Zeppelin. Uh, I mean, the name, not, not the music, because this was a dumpster fire when it came to music. Unironically inspired Crush 40. <laughs> Next, we have the Sega VR. Thank you. That is the actual mock-up of the Sega VR. I have a real one. What? Wait, what? I do. How'd you fucking get it? My friends develop a lot of VR consoles, so they got one to see what it's like. Oh god. Yeah, that's terrible. So here's the thing. In designing the Sega VR, Tom Kalansky went to the company that designed the VR for Virtual Boy played with it, and went, this is goddamn terrible, no one would want to use this. 
which is the first of many times Tom Klansky found a company before Nintendo and then rejected them. Because he's good at his job. Uh, so it's clearly not, because he still thought VR was a good idea. So he partnered with another company that uh, found this cool technology that let them do head tracking pretty cheap. And they got really far in development. They had actual versions. They had giveaways in Sonic Magazine before they realized that nobody enjoyed playing Sega VR. You play it for like five minutes, and then, like, if you're playing Sonic, you've already crashed into a wall. If you're playing Mortal Kombat, you are bleeding. If you're playing literally anything else, you're just vomiting because, again, it's a Sega game. So it just didn't go anywhere, thank God. Yeah. Sega's next attempt at TV show was so bad it underflowed into good. Also known as Sonic the Hedgehog or Sonic Satan. It really actually inspired a lot of the story moving forward of the whole Sonic's Freedom Fighter, and it took a page out of the Star Wars book, which was really popular. I, I the appreciate time. they had to call it Sonic Sat AM, in case you forgot when it was on. <laughs> what happens if they change the time? Oh, well, then it stops being culturally relevant. Uh, but <laughs> it, inspired, it was inspired by Star Wars with the whole idea that the bad guys are already in control. They've won, and the good guys have all the odds stack, stacked against them. Um, I've been, so it was actually pretty good, and I mean, fans are even to this day still enjoying it, and they're apparently fighting for a Netflix revival, and oh boy, I'm excited for that. It, Sonic can join the ranks of the great remakes, like Death Note, Avatar The Last Airbender, and Neon Genesis Evangelion. But, I mean, they technically haven't ruined Avatar The Last Airbender yet, but oh, give them time. You know. They'll get there. Does but, anyone have faith in that? Raise your hand. Good. But it was also popular enough to... Have a, comic, no. have a comic book pick up the story and continue it. Uh, the comic book also had a lot of fans and managed to go for almost 20 years. They had 290 issues before they sued themselves into oblivion and uh, closed up shop. Um, yeah. Next, uh, which is, again, I have to emphasize this is real. It's a karaoke add-on for your Genesis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, that's all I was saying, this fucking karaoke add-on for the Genesis. It really revolutionized the scene. And the next official entry into the com Sonic comics... The best official entry. ...was Tails Gets Trolled. It was the, the harrowing story of uh, Tails getting trolled and, and seeking vengeance. So of course Sonic being a hero advocates, no, just make friends with your troller. But Shadow knows what's up. He knows the best way to deal with getting trolled is to brutally murder them. As a note, um... Do not make friends with us, we don't want to be your friends, so don't take the Sonic approach. But also don't murder us, that's illegal. But uh, just... They might not know, I want to make sure. A little known fact. We do have a one-up mushroom though, just in case. Tails Gestrol also invented most much of the uh, Western literature uh, canon with Wild E. Coyote, <laughs> Skeeter, Trix Rabbit, Chester Cheeto, Cosmo, Hermit the Frog, the idea that smoking weed is good for you. Also, invented the own concept of musicals and Alexander Hamilton as a person. If you haven't listened to that, by the way, it's goddamn art. Uh, the final thing that the Genesis did was a computer. This is a fully functional computer with a built-in Sega Genesis, in case you needed that for some fucking reason. And it costs $1,100, not in today money, but in 1991 money, which, in case you're unfamiliar with inflation rates, is more than $1,100 in today money. So why? Why Sega? And you put all these Sega add-ons together, this is what the Genesis looks like. And the thing is, while Genesis plans were buying pieces, like, like owning a Genesis was like building a home from a catalog. You're just like buying it piecemeal. And... Because of that, Sega has the same trajectory of a company as Sears does, which is they're fucking on their shit. So after the, the resounding success of Sonic 1, they, they had to make Sonic 2 really reinvent the formula, add a second playable character that you can use, the Tails. Um, but that was, that was it. Same basic story, same, same gameplay. Yeah. Okay. Next. Going into Sonic 3, Sega had a lot of cultural clout for some fucking reason. Because, I don't know, people like Sonic. Weird. Why? God damn it. 
So uh, they were able to hire a pretty famous musician to do the music for Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and Knuckles. Uh, the problem, of course, was that the musician turned out to be noted child diddler. Jared, no, wait, wrong child diddler. Jared from... <laughs> okay, there can't be too many famous pedophiles that they could have collabed with. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, yeah, it's Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson's the child diddler they worked with. So, uh, deep into production of the music for Sonic 3, it turned out that Michael Jackson fucking is a pedophile. Took him a while, right? So they had to change all the music for Sonic the Hedgehog 3, and by that I mean they just did the littlest amount they could to say OC do not steal. A tactic that the fan base uses to this day. <laughs> and Sonic 3, on the actual gameplay side, tried to expand on the whole formula, make lar levels that were larger in design, and kind of added more focus on the story. Um, but it also started development as a 3D game, which later became Sonic 3D Blast, but was that was cut, and then they just stick, stuck to what they knew best. Which then was split again because they ran out of development time into two separate games, Sonic 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles. Um, so, it introduced Knuckles, who could finally show us the way. But so it was, uh, but this time you could actually play as Knuckles, and it was uh, introduced a lock-on adapter that you could use with your games, uh, because they felt Game Genie was getting too much of the market. They really needed to emphasize that you could have two games fuck. <laughs> yeah, so it allowed you to plug in Sonic 3, and play through both Sonic 3 and Sonic and Knuckles, as either Sonic, Tails, who's normally only in Sonic 3, or Knuckles, who's only in Sonic and Knuckles. And they even made it backwards compatible with Sonic 2, so you could plug it in there and play, play Knuckles. And they, and they just, they want, but they were, when in development, they were like, what happens if someone plugs in something else? It's like, we gotta replace it, replace it with Knuckles. You like Toe Jam and Earl? No, you gotta have Toe Jam and Knuckles. Earthworm Jim? No, Earthworm Knuckles. I mean, just any game, even VR chat. And then, when you get your 32X, Robbie, why are you here? For the panel! You're not invited. Oh, God. Get the fuck out. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sick. I mean, he did miss, miss our best memes. Yeah, we're, like, you missed the only good joke. I, don't ask them, because they don't know what it was, because they didn't laugh at it. But you did miss the only good joke. So, when, when you're playing Sonic and Knuckles, this is what your fucking Genesis looks like. Uh, or a more alliterative is that there were two bombings, we had to use both of them. And then, of course, we can't forget the last Sonic game that was produced in this generation, the one that was really made to appeal to Sonic's core fan base, four-year-olds, with Tails the Music Maker for the Sega Pico. I'm not going to talk about the Sega Pico, because that's a waste of everyone's time. Instead, we're going to talk about the Sega Saturn. <laughs> it's an actual picture of the Sega Saturn. So, yeah. what, what did go right with the Sega Saturn? That's the real question. So first, Sega met with Project Reality. So the people who designed all that shit for the N64 could have designed it for the Sega Saturn. But Sega of Japan was like, oh, we don't, we don't want to work with an American company. That's fucked up. So they didn't. So then, Sega had another option. Tom Clancy had a fucking contract with Project Reality and recommended them to Nintendo. So this is all his fault that we have the N64. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Tom Clancy. You, you saved the Genesis and then promptly destroyed Sega. Um, so after that didn't fucking happen, Sega was trying to figure their shit out. Sony wanted to make a video game console and really hated Nintendo. Like, they were straight entering the market out of spite. So there was an opportunity, and again, they, they, he worked on a contract for this, for them to work with Sony. Uh, the idea was that Sony and Sega would uh, co-produce a console, they would split the losses in console sales, but then keep their own publishing profits from games. The idea being that Sega was better at publishing games than Sony, which at the time was somehow true. <laughs> the 90s were weird. Okay, it all makes sense now. <laughs> Sonic 3 feels good. Uh, so, that didn't fucking happen though, because again, Sega of Japan's like, Sony doesn't know what they're doing, they're gonna fail the market. So instead, 
And as we all know, that happened. No one's ever played a PlayStation. So instead, we got the Sega Saturn. And the problem with the Sega Saturn was one, it cost $400. No one wants to pay $400 for a console. Uh, two, their opening release party for E3, they like showed E3, like, hey, everybody, we're going to release the Sega Saturn. I know it's coming out in, t in November. And by November, we mean right fucking now. So it was a surprise launch for the Sega Saturn. Only a couple companies had copies of Sega Saturns to sell because they didn't fucking manufacture enough for this. So, like, five people got a Saturn with the three launch games that were actually available and no other games to come out until goddamn November when the console was slated to launch. Not only that, but KB Toys and a lot of other game manufacturers... It's too red. It's so red. Uh, KB Toys and a lot of other... Uh, Companies that stocked games were really upset that they didn't, you know, get Sega Saturns on launch date or know that that was going to fucking happen. So they signed exclusivity deals with Sony to only sell Sony consoles and games and no Sega stuff. And not only that, the console had two fucking discrete CPUs. And instead of using triangles as um, for its polygons, it used quadrilaterals. The thing was a goddamn nightmare to program. The people who designed it said only one in a hundred game programmers could actually make anything on the fucking console, and that was probably true. Next point, look at that fucking controller. No. No. Are you on drugs? That's the only way to play knights. <laughs> no, the only way to play knights is to not play knights. Just, just crack it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, this is the pancake. Just, just crack it. Uh, I forgot what I had this line thing for, because I didn't practice um, and while Sega was selling their console for $400, Sony was entering them in a goddamn arms race of prices and decided to price dump the PlayStation for $300. In fact, they were sued for price dumping their console, just not by Sega, but by Atari, because Atari thought the only reason the Jaguar wasn't taking off was because the Sega Sony with the, the Sony PlayStation was price competitive. So when Sony releases their console $100 less and people are willing to make games for it, it's going to go really well, especially when Sega Saturn doesn't even have a fucking Sonic game. But there was one last Sonic game for the Genesis. I'm talking, of course, about Sonic Extreme. It totally came out. All the media outlets are lying to you. They just don't think you can handle the greatness. Uh, but I, of course, played it. It's wonderful, and it actually was served as the inspiration for the whole gravity physics in Super Mario Galaxy. They did it first, they did it best, Nintendo can't match, hope it can't to them. I mean, it's, it's how it works with Sega, is they did it first, they did it best, and then they never did it right again. <laughs> it's the motto. If I've done it right once, I do everything right. Yeah, it was also the TV tie-in for the Sonic X TV show. Uh, so next, we have the Sega Dreamcast. I don't remember why he's the image. At one point, every joke in here had to do with the Soviet Union, and they're slowly getting phased out. But we still have Gorbachev. Uh, he was like the last hope. You know, like, he was put in charge of Russia, and everyone's like, oh, maybe Russia will figure their shit out. And it was the same with the Sega Dreamcast. We're like, maybe Sega finally figured their shit out. Uh, it's a $200 console. Much to Sega of Japan's chagrin, they wanted it to be backwards compatible with the Saturn, which would have made it cost $400. And nobody, and Sega of America rightly went, no, no one fucking owns a Sega Saturn outside of Japan. That will kill the console. Uh, it still died, but at least it wasn't because it cost four hundred dollars. <laughs> so to try to to try to sell this new console, they had to put a Sonic game on it. So of course, I'm talking about Sonic Adventure. When they went to make it, it had uh, 3D, so they had to redesign all of the new characters to give them, and I quote, new, edgy, more Western designs. Because uh, yeah, that turned out great. I mean, and even the mechanics in the game were questionable. I mean, fishing in a Sonic game? In fact, I learned that Big the Cat was only put in the game because one of the developers had created a fully functioning fishing rod like in the engine, and they were just like, yeah, we're keeping this. This is great. Make a character for it. Imagine, Robbie, a world where no one designed that fishing rod, and then Big the Cat would not be the sexiest Sonic boy. A world I do not want to live in. I mean, anything with Sonic is a world I don't want to live in. Yeah. Right? Well. But I'm glad we could agree on something for once.
And then, because it's a Sonic game, they had to have some sort of edge factor, so they threw in a uh, questionable ro robot with questionable morals. So, after Sonic Adventure, Sega closed shop for their console, because when it came down to it, even though the Dreamcast was selling at $200 and was pretty, like, competitive, uh, the PlayStation 2 was going to come out any year now, and it could play DVDs, so why would I buy a fucking Dreamcast? So... Uh, Sonic Adventure 2 is kind of like the fall of the Berlin Wall, in that Sonic was finally being introduced into polite society. So, like, America released McDonald's into Russia, and Russia released election interfering into America. Sonic unleashed Adventure 2 into the world. And this was probably the peak of Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, here's a graph of, graph of soap sales. Not the shoes. I couldn't find anything to track the stock price of soap shoes. <laughs> but these are just, you know, deodorant brands. And let's be honest, like, soap, soap, they're all the fucking same. Also, again, if you're not wearing deodorant, goddamn do it. We're at a convention. I know that you don't think you have to smell good for these people, but you have to smell good for me. <laughs> um, and this game got fucking 89 on Metacritic. And if you remove your rose-tinted glasses, you'll realize that's exclusively because of the level City Escape. And without City Escape, that would be a 69 nice. nice. Yeah, then, then next out of, the, out of Sega came Sonic. never changed the font. <laughs> Don't worry about it, I'll never notice. I changed it on a different version. But Sonic Heroes, it was just Sega decided that they had to slam their OCs into literally everything. So they just tried to cram as many OCs as they could into here. Uh, the rumored fifth team was your dad and his two co-workers. At this point, it was more likely that someone was going to be included in a Sonic game than they weren't. So that meant with the next Sonic game, they had to really cut back on the characters. So instead of doubling the number again, they just gave Shadow a gun, and he dealt with the situation. Uh, <laughs> This is, like, my favorite image. I don't know why. It's so adorable. <laughs> so, uh, Shadow of the Hedgehog is the classic tale of uh, a hedgehog with amnesia shooting things, which, as we all know, everybody has experienced in their life <laughs> when that showed up at their goddamn door. That's really all that Shadow of the Hedgehog is. Though I would... I, I'd like to live in a world... Or my interpretation is if Sega was still making consoles for some fucking point... Shadow the Hedgehog would have happened as a game, but afterwards they would have rounded up all of Sonic Team and done to them what Shadow did to the cast. Just, you're done. We're starting again. This is all we have. This in sports games. Yeah, but they didn't do that, so they let the developers kind of do their own thing. And we got this. Like, I, I, just, just, I don't even want to talk about this. I mean, talking about it might literally kill me. The game is that toxic and bad. I'd rather digest some of that radioactive waste that Sonic's original dad fell into. And uh, I think most of you out in the audience also feel the same, if, if you're not too busy clipping into the floor. <laughs> but at least we had something better coming out now. <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> yes, because... That's, that's... I don't even know what that... that what's that be, the equivalent of being excited about? Like, if Pence becomes president? Yeah, this is the moment of being excited about Mike Pence becoming president. <laughs> yeah, the bar was that low. Oh, God. And come on, like, what were they on for this one? It's just like, werehog? It's like, that, that means a per human turning into a hedgehog. Not a hedgehog turning into a wolf. It's like, the, the wolf part of werewolf is what means wolf, not where. It's like, did, did nobody own a dictionary? I don't know, where is the wolf? <laughs> Street? We're good. No, no, we got the joke. Like, this panel's done. We mastered humor. Man, mean, but at least they had some daytime levels. Those were good. But all oh, those nighttime levels. Ooh, boy. Because cause Sonic's about going fast, so I want to go slow and have a beat-em-up brawler that takes, like, three hours per level. Yeah, yay, Sonic. Really figured out what I wanted there. The fuck did, like, the stretchy arms come from? Rice like, arms. No, 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 like, what, wait, was he where Rystar? Is that what he was? Rystar was the only Sega character who had those stretchy arms. I mean, I know that, but, like, why did he have stretchy arms? What part of being a werehog gives you stretchy arms? They had to reference the most so. No, they didn't. 
It's not how this works. Okay, so next we have Sonic and the Black Knight, which as we all know is the Sonic adaptation of Monty Python and the Holy Grail. And is somehow even less historically accurate than Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Now, at this point, Sonic games are fucking awful. Like, you just sit there, it's like Sega can't release anything good. It's like looking at Trump's approval ratings. Yeah, he can't win. Sega can't make a good game, Trump can't become president. Joke's on us, Trump can be president, and Sega can make a good game. Yeah. That's Sonic Mania. I'm not saying that Sonic Mania made Donald Trump president, but following my logic, Sonic Mania definitely made Trump president. And I would love to live in a world where Sonic Mania didn't exist if it meant Hillary Clinton, our queen, was in charge. <laughs> but she's not, that's not our world, and fucking, there's a good Sonic game. Wait, sorry. There's a good Sonic game. <laughs> yeah, but all There's these, not a good Sonic game. All these dumpster fires really put the financial straits on the Sega. They had to come out with something that just made them money. So that key leads us to the most recent entry in the series, Sonic Versus. Because they realized, well, how do we just make money? Obviously, furry generator. No one can resist. Our fandom is weird, but we're willing to raid all of their wallets because they don't need that money is they put like all their time and character creation in this game and then they were like, oh wait, we still need a game? Like the night before it released. So they just got the interns drunk and went, hey, go make, make, make some levels. And they made two and that was the whole game. So where are we at like as a society with Sega and Sonic? And I think we're kind of in like a cold war. Or at least we were, it's, it's a little less cold now, but it's still there. Like. We, we interact with Sonic sometimes. You let him into Smash. He gets to play in the Olympics. But we really don't want him interacting with society more than that. The thing is, we can't actually destroy Sega or Sonic. Because, like during the Cold War, it's going to be some mutually assured destruction. Like, this, this is what's going to happen to us on the societal scale if Sega goes away. Because the people who drew this, and 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 this... They're going to be unleashed upon us. <laughs> They're going to join other fandoms. Harry Potter fandom is going to somehow get worse. <laughs> the alt-right like ideology is going to actually get slightly better, but it's like the one good thing. And then the people who are making these fucking games, they're going to have to go somewhere too. We're going to get like Drake's Uncharted with Knuckles the Akin. <laughs> fucking like... Assassin's Creed Shadow the Hedgehog. It's not good. We can't let them out to ruin what we love, which is uh, video game. We love video games, right? Yeah, and the rest of the world. And not furries. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. where we're at. So that's the panel. Like, you have a special thanks to all the kids who picked on you for liking Sonic the Hedgehog. Thank you. Uh, Sonic, uh, Sony for ending Sega as a console manufacturer once and for all. Too bad they couldn't finish the fucking job. Magwest for giving us panels, and Snake for having the best matchup against Sonic in Super Smash Bros. It's Ultimate. even at worst. <laughs> That's good. Thanks, Snake. Really putting that piece of shit in his place. And so, thanks to you, audience, for letting us yell at you for an hour. It's I don't great. know why you're still here. Yeah. Let's, well, I mean, what else is there to fucking do? Like, it's 10 more. Sleep like regular people? No, no one does that. So, you can follow us on Twitter, 5th Gen, not PKMN. I didn't put it on this slide, so. That's, that's what I sound like going in reverse. What the hell did y'all talk about? <laughs> you, know, you know this is a Sonic character, right? Robbie? Sailor Moon? No, 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 the AMV, the crawling in my skin AMV for Sailor Moon. It's as much as a Sonic character as you are. No, it's, it's Shadow the Hedgehog. Uh, we went over it, just like PG&E has placed the cat. I should have been here. Yeah, you fucked up. So you can follow us on Twitter, 5th Gen, not PKMN. Uh, I've recorded this panel. I record our other panels, so if you want to watch them, a uh, link to our YouTube is on the Twitter. If you want to follow us, tweet about random shit and follow, follow our Twitter. That's basically it. Thank you all for showing up. If you have questions, I guess you could ask them, but I don't know why you would. Yes. Is it a to the question? What if Sega released after Genesis Mini, the new one, that's not freaking act games? Okay, the, the new no, Genesis... Let, 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 
after New Dance Media, that's not, I can't, but I say release a Saturn Mini. That was actually good. It won't be good. They didn't put Sonic 3 on the Sega Genesis Mini, so it's not like they're going to put good games on the Sega Saturn okay, Mini. Okay, Genesis Mini for the new one. Yeah, yeah, the new one doesn't have Sonic 3. Newest one? Yeah. We're no. going to get Christmas Nights on the Saturn Mini. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Yeah, the, I mean, the Saturn did the whole Wii U thing of not having good games. That being Wii said, Saturn. yeah. It, like, unironically, I would really appreciate a Saturn Mini that had, like, actually, like, the good Saturn games. That'd be cool. But I don't fucking trust Sega to release that. Well, I trust Sega to, to, to at least find... I, uh, I at least want Sega to release the whole trilogy of having the Dragon series in the modern graphics. No, I, like, unironically, that's a good idea, but they're not going to do it. I mean, it. just look at the other things Sega have done. They don't make good decisions. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Guy, yeah. Guy with Sonic shoes. Um, what is the Sega console you're most scared of? All of them. Yeah, just, just all of them. Uh, I'm going to go with the Genesis because that was actually my first video game console and I'm pretty sure my dad got it for me so I'd be into sports because the game he got me was college football. And uh, joke's on him, I'm 28 and I'm giving co panels at anime conventions. So he fucked that up. I don't want to say it, but I've never owned a Sega console so uh, I don't want to get jumped the worst dark Sonic a Sonic console. I have one. Gen 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 this model two. Okay, that's the one you own, or home. Okay. Not home. Yeah. I don't. I never own any Sega consoles. Yet somehow I have the Sega Dreamcast web browser CD in an <laughs> unopened box. No one in my family's owned a Sega console. Can, can I have it? <laughs> I mean, it, it's like oh. the AOL disc. They just appeared, and nobody knows where they came from. No, no, I, unironically, most afraid of... Okay, so there, there's, like, a reason to be afraid of every console. The Master System, because there's so fucking many of them, you don't know which one's gonna fuck with you. The Genesis, because... Yeah, there's, there's history there. The Saturn, because how could someone program something so terrible? And the Dreamcast for, while being good, still being terrible. Like, existing in this quantum state where I don't know what the fuck it is. And that scares me too, I mean, so... Even when we do our console worth panel, we don't know what generations it's in. Because yeah, it's yeah. just like, it's in two of them, maybe four? I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's every generation is the Sega Dreamcast. We're doing a panel. Yeah, if, if you're the next panelist and you want to set up, we can stop. I don't care. We're just, we're just wasting everyone's time. Which is my favorite thing to do. That's why we give panels. Yeah. Tyler, what the fuck do you want? If Knuckles was the Werehog instead, would Leash be a good game? <laughs> Robbie, Rob, you, you really believe this. That's my take. I believe that that game would be fucking dope if it was just Knuckles. I mean, that question is giving me an existential crisis, but probably? I'm going to still say no. <laughs> but... Mostly, mostly because you know where Knuckles is gonna look like Sonic Boom Knuckles. Yeah, yeah. And okay, that's yeah, the last no, fucking no. thing you want. I have to roll my answer way back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're done, Robbie. Yeah. Yes. Okay, it's an alternative universe, and you guys are now the CEOs of Sega, and you're coming back into the video game console world. What Sell the company. <laughs> Just stop everything. <laughs> Well, look what you did. <laughs> this is your fault. You have to do the paperwork for this. I'm not doing it. You okay there? Eh. Classic. We'll probably be fine later. We'll just swap back to the original universe. Classic crap. Okay. <laughs> Good throw, but you missed. Uh, free hat. <laughs> well, you actually could have kept that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> make, make Sonic okay. It's a souvenir. Huh? I'll keep it as a Sonic souvenir. Okay. It, it's the best Sonic swag you're ever gonna get. <laughs> Even better than that guy's shoes. See, you may you may make stickers and give those out. I draw on hats. You should start making uh, stickers on hats. No, that's too much work. I can't draw, Rob. You should make stickers, but like use them on things so they're unusable. <laughs> 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 they have no adhesive, they just 
I like it. <laughs> so that, that's a that level idea. Yeah. Nothing else. Okay, cool. Thank you all for coming. I had fun making fun of you.